morning, Quadcopter101 here. And before we get started, let's get today's shout out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Tech, Tech Network. I'm sorry. Tech Network was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter101 here with a review of a new airplane. This is the XK. X420. What's special about the XKX420? Well, it's another one of those vertical takeoff and landing drones, uh, uh, very similar to uh, the previous XKX520, which I'll discuss here in a bit uh, to compare. But what is uh, special about the XKX420 other than its VTOL? Well, it's relatively low cost, folks. I think this thing runs about $58 ready to fly out of the box. Actually, you got to attach these two wingtips and attach the propeller guards and attach the tail end of gear and then it's ready to go out of the box. Everything's clipped on, including the, uh, the tail uh, rudder. Uh, these, though, have to be held on in place by two screws. That wasn't hard to do as it comes with a screwdriver to do such. Uh, but again, it's vertical takeoff and landing. What you get in the box is the drone or the airplane itself. You get a spare set of props, a uh, <laughs> screwdriver, you get a charger for the battery, and you get the battery, which is a 2S 7.4 volt 500 milliamp per hour 20C battery. Not very, you know, not super powerful, but good enough to for this airplane. You get the instruction manuals, and you get a vertical takeoff instruction manual that shows you how to do vertical takeoffs along with the controller you get. Now, what is the difference between this and the X520? Everybody's seen my reviews of the X520. Well, the X520 is a brushless motor airplane, and it's much bigger than the X420. Okay, this this has brushless motors, um, and it's a lot bigger, and it comes with a much better controller. <laughs> As you can see here, this is the controller for the X520, but it also comes with increased price. Uh, the X520 520 is about $40 more than this. You know, this runs about uh, $58. That runs about uh, $90 to $100 range in that area there. So keep that in mind. You know, the idea was XK wanted to produce a cheaper uh, version of the X520. And the way they did that was to make it smaller, cheaper transmitter, and brushed motors. These are 050 motors. They are very common. Very inexpensive motors, actually, too. They only run about $1.80, $2 in that range there. $1.50, actually, I've seen them in some places. And, uh, very common motors, so you can find replacement motors for this if needed, is what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> but uh, let's go over the controller for this. Uh, interesting buttons on this controller is this one here. This switches between vertical and horizontal flights. You, want to, you start off in vertical flight. You start the motors by bringing both sticks down and out then giving a throttle and it will take off it will also do automatic takeoffs too if you put the throttle at mid position like this and hold this button up here this throttle trim button up it will automatically take off and hover and it will also it's supposed to automatically land i've had problems doing this with the x520 i don't really don't trust the automatic landing but you press downward on the button and the drone will land uh, automatically land other things about it is uh, this does have a potential for video <laughs> in the future. You can buy an optional camera for this. They say there's an optional camera for this that you can insert inside the drone. And the po top of the er aircraft top of the aircraft pops off to insert that camera module. That's going to be sold separately. It's not available yet, but it's coming in the near future for use with this airplane. The XK has their own special FPV camera that they want to include in that and that camera has a swivel lens so you can swivel But I'm looking at it right now and the maximum up on that camera is going to be about 30 degrees down 40 degrees down. You're going to be seeing a lot of ground with that camera So right now I'm it's probably not going to be a good idea for that camera I don't know why XK can't point their camera the same problem. I had the same problem with the uh, X520 This is the FPV version. That's max up. Okay. Uh, 40, look, not, lots of ground with this camera, so I'm, I'm going to expect lots of ground with this camera too. I think the idea is just to get ground pictures, not to actually fly FPV with the camera. Um, did I mention, uh, here's, show the battery bay. There's where the batteries go inside this. Uh, this was always a problem with the X520, is I always had a hard time getting the battery in there. I tried it with this one, and it's very similar. But uh, let's go over the other things on the aircraft. The motors come with uh, heat sinks 
on the bottom to keep them cool. That is that is a neat idea. I like that, that they included that. And again, this has prop guards. That's the one thing the X520 did not have is prop guards. And why is that important? Well, the X520, I find when I do vertical landings, a lot of the time, if there was a wind and I didn't land perfectly vertical, it would flip over and my propellers would start digging into the ground and possibly damage, well, damaging the propellers and possibly damaging the motors and ESCs. Uh, XK finally included prop guards on these to lessen the chance of you damaging those motors and ESCs. So that is the X520. Let's put it down again so you can see the whole thing. Um, let's take it out in the field actually and fly it and see how it performs. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 with the XK X420. We're out at one of my favorite flying fields. We're going to start off vertical flight here and then switch to horizontal flight and probably move over to the main field over there for the horizontal flight portion of it. But uh, let me show you how to start this up, folks. Um, with this particular drone, since this is a toy drone, you got to uh, toy style airplane uh, you got to start it by first plugging in the battery I know sometimes I get uh, people more experienced pilots poo-pooing me about uh, why are you plugging in the drone first instead of turning on the controller well that's what you do with these toy grade ones unfortunately that's how they are set up to work <laughs> you turn on the drone first and then turn on the controller for the toy grades once you go into the hobby grades that you get that's reverses folks you turn on the transmitter first and then the drone or the airplane but that's the way it works for this particular one okay i got a slight breeze coming from that direction there i want to point the wing toward that because that lessens the effect of when on vertical takeoff of drifting and let's go over one more time before we, or let's turn on the controller and bind it by up and down and we should be bound to the drone now one more time let's go over the buttons this one here switches between horizontal or vertical and horizontal mode once i get in the air i press this button and it will switch to horizontal mode this one here is inoperative with this uh, particular drone but this is for taking videos and photos um, you press into the pitch roll stick or the throttle stick i'm sorry and that changes the rates so you, you can uh, make harder banking turns if you press into the left stick pressing into the right stick turns off the stabilization mode in horizontal flight and that allows you to do loops and rolls otherwise you'll, you'll be limited in the amount of loops and rolls you can in stabilization mode they call that 6g mode okay we're going to do an automatic takeoff and to do such according to the instructions is to move the throttle up halfway and then hold the throttle trim button like so and then once we're in the air again i'm going to switch to horizontal mode and there it goes now you can fly this like a quadcopter as you can see here and you can adjust the yaw, pitch, and roll, just like a quadcopter. So it's not too hard to fly. Bringing it up close, letting you see it up close. And we're going to go up a bit higher, then we're going to switch to horizontal mode. So let me go up a bit higher, giving it more throttle. And switching now. Let's hold off on that horizontal mode, folks. Uh, I think I need to calibrate its accelerometers because it was it was drifting there, drifting toward the deck, in other words. And actually, I might need to let's put some putty on the back, see if that helped it. But uh, actually, let's go right over the field. Let's try this one more time. This time, I'm going to do a horizontal takeoff instead of a vertical takeoff. But let me check. Stabilization, pitching down, pitching up. I might need to adjust the pitch horns a bit to give it a little more upward. But let's try to take do a horizontal takeoff this time. Okay, I'm still in horizontal mode, and the way I know that is my blue light is blinking. So it's set up for horizontal flight. And with that in mind, let's do a horizontal takeoff from the dirt here. Okay, putting it on the ground. We should be good to go, ready to go. So let's give it the throttle. There we go. That time it worked. <laughs> it needed a lot more speed though. 
Now I'm giving it a little bit of upward pitch to keep it in the air. If I let go of the stick, it starts to descend. So yeah, I'm going to need to adjust those uh, pitch horns on the uh, back there for this to, to raise up those ailerons a little bit higher. Let's see how it flies. It's not as stable as the X5 520. It requires a little more control or a little more pilot input. So I don't know about this begin, being a beginner's, beginner's flyer. Right now I'm giving a lot of upward pitch. There we go. I'm not even gonna try 3D mode yet until I feel better with this. But it does have power. Let's try going back to 3D or 6G or vertical, I mean. Okay, switched back to vertical. I'm bringing it down lower to see it. Yeah, it's cool, ain't it? These are cool, these vertical ones. I'm gonna switch back to horizontal here shortly, go up a bit higher, and then and back to vertical or horizontal. Now I'm giving a lot of throttle right now. So that uh, battery is not the best in the world. Not best at all, <laughs> but it's keeping it in the air. So again, this one's about $40 cheaper than the X520. Um, X520 does fly better, folks, because of those more powerful uh, um, brushless motors on it. But this one still flies well, not too bad. You get the, Once you get the feel of it, and again, I'm going to need to adjust the pitch horns <laughs> on the back. They need to be raised. Need to be raised up. Vertical. Back to vertical. <laughs> Come and down, come and down. Let's bring it down lower. Let's bring it over toward me. Can I bring it toward me? I think I can, I think I can. Oh, why did it do that? The motor's just cut off. Probably on low battery. I, like I said, the battery was getting low. I could feel that. Let me double check what broke off there. Something broke off the clip. So once you notice you're giving it lots of throttle to stay in the air, you better land it because it will that's its throttle cutoff or its low battery cutoff. Uh, this can be fixed. It's just the clip that holds onto the back there. So that's the end of the battery. That's how much flight time you get out of this. Uh, it really does suck the battery really fast, unfortunately. Let me unplug it. But let me before I unplug it, let me hold it up. Give my last thoughts. Well, you know, as a beginner flyer, it's it's relatively good. Um, no, it's not as a beginner flyer. You're going to be need to be an intermediate flyer to fly this, folks. Uh, this one. Well, you know, it's kind of fast. A little too fast for beginner flyers, in my opinion. Uh, intermediate flyers actually should like this, and it, it costs the $58 for a vertical takeoff airplane. It's not too bad. Just remember, once you notice you're giving it too much throttle to stay in the air, it's time to land. That battery's getting low. So, hope you enjoyed this flight, and probably you want to try better 2S batteries than the one that they give you here. It's not the best in the world, but other batteries can fit in that battery bay. Let me show you real quick before we go here. But... This is his battery bay, and you can buy better. Probably, I would use a quadcopter micro FPV racer style batteries in this. That should give it a good flight time. So, hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.